It's like, how do you get your foot caught in the I line? don't know. Just, you just go outside and run laps. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm <laughs> Nate. And this is three old tag dudes. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! Okay, so anyway. we got what we got. What, what we got, got this week? What we got is it data storage stuffs? So kind of looking at hard drives, really, because I, I so I, I picked up a drive to put really as a, as a knickknack. I wasn't really going to try and make the thing actually work. Knickknacks. So, but I Howdy thought we, we'd look though. at yeah. So I thought we'd look at, at least the the concept of like modern drives. So this is one of the smallest you can buy. This is an NVMe drive. Um, I don't remember what version. It probably says on there somewhere. I want to be old man IT and say, I hate those. Yeah. What was wrong with freaking um, cereal? Click, click, I will say click. this. Yeah. <laughs> they can I still will be solid say These state. are insanely fast. Like, wow fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, the first laptop I have before these, I'm like, oh, wow. ATA ought to be fast enough for anybody. Um, so... You know, you start to have, you know, go, you know, another the laptop drive. This is a SATA drive. This is a SAS drive. SAS. So SAS is a uh, SCSI, what was it, a SCSI address? Story? I can't remember. It's a SCSI drive. It's a SCSI, serial SCSI drive. Um, I remember the acronym. Don't SAS me. Oh, yeah. But this is a laptop. This is actually on a server, and you can see the physical difference on them. Mm-hmm. And this is thicker, but it has a lot of redundancy built in for... Uh, data loss prevention stuff like that and of course this is just a basic drive and of course if you can get a a modern SSD to fit into this slot mm-hmm. you know and it'll look about the same functionally absolutely I mean, they really you know, that's just a, they're surprisingly light though yeah and of course this is a standard desktop hard drive from like uh, 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 no, 2000-ish 2008 so I'm, I'm gonna guess I'd say 8 maybe 10 it's a 1 terabyte just a Ooh, basic drive 1 terabyte but it's a basic drive, but it's it's missing the Dell speed rails. <laughs> um, well, it's actually got this is this is actually out of a uh, it's actually out of a Dell. I've not seen one of those without the uh, green tabs. All right, I don't know. This is one terabyte's pretty big. That's never got all the um, wheels. <laughs> yeah. So this was, you know, these these were decent drives for for modern machines, generally speaking. Obviously, this is the newest technology and variant. Okay. Uh, but these were, you know, these are still common in servers, and a lot of, you know, systems will still use something like this for bulk storage. But let's face it, you guys don't watch this channel for modern stuff. No, I no. So I decided to find the biggest drive I physically could buy. They watch it for ham radio and get confused when we don't. It's coming. <laughs> we'll be there. Just calm down. Oh, we're multifaceted. Sorry, continue, sir. So, so Squirrel. I just, yeah, so I decided. <laughs> Yeah. Sarah watches. She Don't was... unsubscribe. <laughs> Does that work? Can you do that? Is that how that works? If you unsubscribe, we'll mail you a squirrel. <laughs> yes, it's terrifying. <laughs> You'll open know. the mailbox and the little squirrel's going to come out at you like... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, that scared me. <laughs> you ever wonder about your friends? So what do you have for us this week, Nathan? Well, so you showed anyway. us these hard drives. What, what? So anyway, so I wanted to find the biggest hard drive that I could physically buy. So I was like, okay, like 10 or 12 terabyte. No, 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 no. We're talking a whole probably what? 20 megabyte, man. What the crap is that? This? Did you take that off the stall in the bathroom? Yeah, what is that? Just <laughs> toilet paper holder. Toilet <laughs> no, this, uh, this is literally... <clears throat> get this to come on. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. Whoa. <clears throat> it's like it was meant to do that. Platters stuff. for reals. Yeah, I can fix that piece. But so <laughs> this is a three platter because the top one is literally just for for oh. safety. This is the actual data platters for the hard drive. <laughs> These Dag are gum. fourteen inch platters. 
This thing, I want to say, is like a 20 meg, maybe a 50 meg drive. I don't think it's even, maybe a gig. I, as I recall, I'll have to go back and look at this, actually. <laughs> You're going to say all that, and it's going to be like 10 megabytes. Yeah, and maybe, <laughs> this may be 10 megabytes. How about it's but if, Do you kerplunk <laughs> that in something? So this actually was one that was a, so back in the day, just real quick, and I will show a picture, like Remington Rand or uh, IBM, any one of those things had uh, large drives that you could put on the big mainframes, like a System 360 or 3, you know, through whatever. And they, some of them had removable hard drives. So you could change the drive platters. This is a platter out of one of those. So basically you would store this with the lid on it, of course, off on a shelf or whatever. And when you needed to change drives, instead of, you know, like, you used to have the real real tape, mm -hmm. but you needed to have some physical hard storage. So there's different ways to do that. But in the end, it became, really, this is the predecessor to this. Because fundamentally, this is, you know, this type of stuff is in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Um, so this used both sides of the platter, and the head assembly of this is gigantic, swinging in there, and this thing spinning around, of course. That had to be terrifying. So this sat in a cabinet that was about the size of this table here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a pretty big size thing. That just had, you, know, you can see pictures of it. Um, we'll put some up now that from, like, NASA and things like that, where they actually had these, where you can see, like, this drum assembly that sit down in this thing. And they had this one here, like I said, a three platter. But if you look in there, you can see where they could change that out to, to different platter designs by changing that, that centerpiece. Oh, my camera. <laughs> I'll make so, how, did, okay. this, did this thing rotate? Yep, it spins. Um, so how, it, many, how many RPMs are we getting on this bad boy? I actually don't know. Finding information on some of that has been really, really interesting. Now, More did I see that it said NCR on it? Yes, this is an NCR branded unit. Oh, shit, that handle came off. It's actually right there. So, I'm going to make an educated guess that this is from an early point of sale system. This, so NCR at this time made parts for several people. This could actually be right off of like an IBM System 360. Or it could. IBM stuff looked very similar to that, especially the carry case. It was. So. Um, Watson, are you in there? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is technically possible to build a more modern read system and fire this thing back up and actually read the date off there. So the nice thing is, is that these things were extremely reliable but you look at this platter that's that's thick that's got some weight to it there i mean you know, in it physically but but the amount of storage capacity on this by today's standards is comical this this probably holds all of realistically probably 10 minutes of mp3 audio <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, yeah if you took one of these off and frisbeed it you could like decapitate somebody you can take off so head, man. apparently years ago one of the guys at work was talking about how they had uh, one or two platters and then he, he pulled one out of a drawer uh, and they used to roll them down the hall just to see how far they'd go <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a job like that yeah it, you work in the same basic area so you know, um, yeah anyway so I'll try doing I, the hula hoop thing where you spin it backwards so it'll come back to you I want to go like Take this into the, the the big room where I work. Yeah, the giant room. <laughs> anyway, that would be very very no no. It would be upset people. But <laughs> so, but this thing, I really want to have this just for knickknack. I wasn't going to try to make this thing actually work again. Although mm. I'm pretty sure you actually could if you really cared to do that. In my case, I really just I mean just that physically. You're going. Yep, that's my hard drive. <laughs> It didn't hold any amount of data, but you know, by today's standards. But it is really, really neat for the fact that oh, it just my, is. Oh, oh yeah, it's those are it's aluminum platters on it. I'm gonna say ten pounds ish. Yeah, it's it's more got than, weight. More than a sack of flour. <laughs> more than a sack of here you go. Um huh. But it's it's amazingly simple the way the thing was actually done, but it's a really well designed system. Um, the fact Ooh. that these are still occasionally showing up being used in places is kind of actually amazing. Being used? Yeah, terrifying. I have heard of people 
they can't get you rid of these things yet because there's something on there they need. That's interesting. It'd be interesting to know what systems these are utilized in today. Oh, my or guess. legacy wasn't, systems still running something. We'll wasn't there a story not that, that long so. ago concerning like five and a half inch floppies or something in the government? Yeah, so they were still running five and a half inch floppy disks. And it became a problem because they could no longer acquire <laughs> no them or something. Source them. Probably uh, completely out of production at this point. <clears throat> I don't remember that news story precisely, but I see. Uh, I found a, an, an open late '90s package of Radio Shack uh, high density uh, inch and a yep. quarter or five and a quarter floppies. Yep. in my garage the other day. <laughs> and they were high density. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. they're still in the nice. Radio Shack hanger thing with oh, the yellow cool. plastic over them. Nice. <laughs> like the, sh- the where they would uh, hang on the shelf. As I recall, my first computer wouldn't do high density discs. I never had one that old yeah. until later. I got my computers a little late. So, well, yeah. I mean, mine, mine was just really old. <laughs> right. <laughs> my I think first I was like 11, had, but yeah. it was. Well, my first PC had three and a half inch floppy, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. Because it was like just really, that was like the mm-hmm. high end, the high, high end drive thing. Uh, I put a 20 meg MFM drive in it with the RLL card, which kicked it up to 33 meg. Oh, that was high end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Mine had uh, the orange monochrome monitor. <laughs> Mine on it, started yeah. with that, but it did have a color. Mine had a color video card in it. Mm-hmm. But I had a, a mo- monitor for I it. had a color video card emulator so mm-hmm. that I could run games. I've heard of those. <laughs> um, yeah. They're, the technology, it, it to me, it's... I, I like I love looking at the older technology, especially like this stuff. This is really from, although I think this one was manufactured. It's actually like in maybe eighty eighty one. Yeah. Um, this technology was really kind of its way out. Oh, it's as old as me. Um, but it's it's fascinating the fact that they went from that to something like this. I mean, it might have took decades, but this thing holds so much more data than that. It is shockingly faster than that. Like comically so, <clears throat> um, and this thing takes no power. I mean, you know, this whereas that thing used to, you know the, the power to run that thing. Pretty sure the thing ran on like probably like two eight three phase. <laughs> you know, this thing runs on three point three volts. <laughs> I mean, we, we've seen kind of a plateau in technology lately, but um, it's amazing how the the leaps and bounds that we've yeah. made in even the last fifty years. Oh yeah. Um, so, My time and temperature thing, you know, the I, yep. I run a time and temperature line, and the machines that used to do that used to be the size of refrigerators. Oh, and yeah. It's now sitting on a device that I can literally hold in my hand. It's it's a an Intel Nook, and it's very yep. overpowered for what it does. Yes. Yeah. So, the technology to make that stuff work has really... The cost per meg... Mm-hmm has dropped to almost nothing, of course, mm-hmm. which is, that's just the reality of the way things are going. Um, I mean, there was a, a price bump when NVMe drives came out, but that has since dropped. Mm-hmm. But that's just real. that's more like a technology change, and you kind of expect that. It's like, you know, brand sure. new cars cost more than, you know, but, mm-hmm. but I really got this thing, I got that drive really because I just wanted to have one to put on a shelf because I thought it was actually really kind of neat. I think you should, like, somehow get some LEDs in between these platters. I think yeah. I probably could somehow just to do that. Yeah. I, mean, I almost I tonight like... brought a large Maxter SCSI hard drive I got. I got it in the 90s. It's from the, I think it's dated 1985. I actually used it in high school on an old 486 with a, I had an NCR, it was actually, all, speaking of NCR, it was an NCR PC that oh, wow. didn't have IDE. It had SCSI, it had a SCSI controller in it. That's all it yep. had. Oh. And uh, this drive worked with that, and I had to cut a hole in the side of the case during the cables out because this thing was a full height. Oh, jeez. Oh, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was massive, and I used it until it started just suddenly having bad sectors constantly. And yeah. That's... But that thing sounded like an airplane taking off. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So the, the compact I have there that's behind the monitor actually has a SCSI card in it. Wow. Um, the Amira machine. Oh yeah, so you, you could have brought your drive and hooked it up to Nathan's computer. It won't, it won't even spin up now. I tried to Aww. spin it up a while back and it went. Aww. 
when they oh. stopped the motor. It's like the chip said no. Sad That's sound. sad. It wasn't locked. It just didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we used to back in the day when we fire up this old server pre two thousand for the or the typing lab mm-hmm. at at the high school. We'd have to take the drives out and do one of these and be like. Yeah, to get oh them to my, spin. Yeah. Oh, and then they'd start spinning and they'd work for another year. We're like, good. <laughs> That's Yay. Did you ever fall for the put it in the refrigerator trick? No, I never heard that one. <laughs> you never heard <laughs> that? No, I've never oh, heard wow. that one. Yeah, that was the uh, one in the. I want to say early 2000s. It was kind of like blowing into Nintendo cartridges. Uh, supposedly did nothing. Change the temperature and it would do something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm telling would, you, blowing yeah. into Nintendo cartridges, though, that worked. Well, I think what it did was blow the dust off something more it's, than anything else. It's it's eighties child lore. I mean, it's just legend. It, well, it was it was true. And what I think how was did funny we all was, learn it. That's the thing. There was like nobody that did not do like, that nationwide. We didn't have social media. I mean, this yeah. literally spread through telephone calls and school <laughs> playgrounds. That's how you learned to blow in Nintendo <laughs> cartridges and Atari. Uh, yeah, what's weird is Atari is slightly less terrible. <laughs> Nothing. The Nintendo connectors were garbage. Nothing ticked Absolute me off. Trash. Nothing ticked me off more as a kid than when you put that cartridge in, hit the power button, and it would flash at oh, you. Oh, you know what was really bad is you play for an hour, then it would suddenly say, "Oh, I don't the, think I ever." The had 10 that NES. Happen. Mine did it all the time. The really? 10 NES chip caused that. It was their security lockout, so you couldn't copy games. <laughs> I didn't and, know uh, that existed. At all. That's why why the original NES blinked. Good. Really? If it didn't, if it couldn't. Um, do that handshake with the 10 NES chip because of a dirty mm-hmm. pen it would just power off and on I see that's why it flashed it wasn't just LED nice. flashing it was the whole console flipping on and off <laughs> <laughs> internally so you know so, way more so about you mean, Nintendo than I so, well I'm, I'm, I am a, a scholar of the 8-bit uh, I legends I guess um, I just play that. I, I know many myths and of the hardware <laughs> but um, yeah the uh if it lost connection, you didn't care if you've been playing Legend of Zelda for an hour or Super Mario Bros. Mm-hmm. 3 and you're in level 7. It didn't care. Atari didn't would just care. go to It would just screen. power off yeah. and you'd see that curtain in Mario 3 and then you'd just throw the controller in disgust to go play outside. I mean, it's was, like... Was 3 on <laughs> NES? Yeah. Okay. How did you not know that? Well, I couldn't remember. When, when, did, uh, when did Super Nintendo come along in the Mario chain? 91. So what would that have been for? What... what? It was technically the fourth one. Okay. Super Mario World originally was okay. prototyped as Super Mario Brothers 4. So. I got you. Okay. I still find that's it funny weird. that yeah. Mario started on Donkey Kong. It, yes, indeed. Yes, but it was called Jumpman. Though. That's true. Well, we segued into... It was a good talk. Good, good technical talk. Indeed. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this one. This is this is a weird, weird item for the channel. We've not had... Anything from that era? Yeah, that's that's it's, uh, 1970s <clears throat> IT ish. So yeah, this is that's back in the day when uh, you know it's mainframes and whole room computers right there. It was better than tape. If your it hard drive crashed, you could actually like damage a room. That's right. <laughs> Set off fire alarm. Hmm. Well, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and we hope that you keep watching. Ring that little bell. Make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know what like what you comments know. help more than anything. Make comments. Yeah. You know, try so, to be nice. Some of you aren't very nice. I don't care Most if you're of nice. you are. I'm not. I don't care if you're nice. Go ahead. No, he let her rip. He scares people. Work. <laughs> let her rip. He he try makes it. poor Tex cry. <laughs> you know, Nonsense. <laughs> it's, about, it's about time for a we read your comments video. We haven't done one for a while. Yeah, anyway, we'll probably need to. <laughs> since last fall, I don't think. I don't so, know if we'll do that soon or not. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. This is Three Old Tech Dudes. See ya. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Three Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share Three OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at Three Old Tech Dudes One on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for Three OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.